Welcome to Mindful Mutiny. I'm going to talk today about the signs that you are in a toxic work environment. Now, recently, and I'm talking about within the last 20 years, work environments have progressively gotten worse and worse and worse, whereas agencies and companies profess to be better and better and better as places to work. However, I have not really seen that to be the case. And what I've found through a career is that it is exceedingly difficult to find a company that is worth working for, that's going to treat you right, that's going to have an actual good culture. And I'll tell you, if they tell you that it's like a family here, just run because it's never like a family there. So the most important thing that I'm going to talk about today is not just the signs that you're in a toxic work environment, but practical examples of it and the effect that it has on your mental health. Three. So the first thing we need to do is actually run with a definition of what a toxic work environment is. So I'm going to do a little bit of reading. Stay tuned. A toxic work environment refers to a workplace where behaviors, attitudes, and interactions create a hostile, harmful, or unproductive atmosphere for employees like you. This can include instances of bullying, harassment, discrimination, micromanagement, lack of communication, excessive workload, and any factors that impact you negatively impacts your well-being, your job satisfaction, your performance. Toxic work environments can have a detrimental effect on you, your mental health, your productivity, and overall quality of life, leading to increased stress, burnout, and turnovers. It means you're waking up in the middle of the night thinking about it. It means Sunday afternoons are really hard thinking about going back to work. Recognizing and addressing toxic workspace dynamics is crucial for fostering a health, helpful and supportive environment for you. Now, over the last several decades, what I've noticed in the workspace is that employers are just demanding more and more and more and more out of people. A new invention comes along like email. In the late 90s and early 2000s, all of a sudden, there's just so much more that is expected of the employee. Mainframe computer systems like intranet systems allow for much greater productivity in the workplace. And what happens is fewer employer employees, greater responsibilities. And in the workspace, what happens to you is that the employer puts together an actual measurement of your productivity, which often outstrips what was expected of an employee 30 years ago by, by oodles and oodles and oodles. And where are you in this? You're trying to meet an expectation of things that is really difficult. And in the meantime, what you have are middle management employees that are stressed and they're trying to meet those kinds of deadlines. And Unfortunately, what so many people have gotten into is that you've got to have a job, you've got to uh, perform at this high level in order for you to move up. And so you end up putting up with and putting up with and putting up with behavior that is just absolutely ridiculous, just so that at the end of the year, they'll throw you a pizza party. Toxic work environments are ones where employees have a high level of mistrust for one another. And there's a high level of turnover. I worked in a company with a clinical staff once where there was a 100% turnover rate in six months for all of the licensed clinicians that worked at that place. And management did not pay attention to it at all. They somehow were gleeful that all of these really wonderful clinicians were gone and that they could bring in a new crew of people that they could more readily control and inform. It was bananas and the workplace felt absolutely terrible. And when you are in a place where you're watching this kind of turnover and you're stressed out too, it really is time for you to get out, for you to get out for your own wellness, your own sanity. It's mainly important to understand how you feel and to know that other people that you work with may be well suited to the environment that you're in and you're not. It might not be toxic for them, but it's toxic for you. What does it feel like to show up to work? 
Do you start feeling your chest getting compressed? Do you start uh, feeling that you're more sleepy in the afternoon just because you're bored and you're trying to escape, that you do a lot of daydreaming at work? Are the meetings really, really hard on you? And do you feel that there is more and more that becomes expected of you without a change in your compensation? Another common thing that has started happening over and over and over, specifically in the last 10 years, are ongoing, never-ending, constant investigations. Investigations of employees, investigations of this allegation, whistleblower this, whistleblower that. What that ends up doing is it puts management and HR in the position of constantly being on a witch hunt, trying to figure out the truth of this allegation or that allegation. And most of these allegations just come from a basic sense of employees just not being happy where they are and wanting to have some sort of power. And so they make a complaint because they feel powerless, because they don't like what is going on. And instead of make their own situation better or go find a better job or invent something, they go and they make various complaints. And so what that ends up being is that there's this constant suspicion in the air. Somebody's always being called into an HR meeting. Somebody's always being investigated for something. It destroys trust and it creates a work environment where pessimism and negativity and suspicion reigns the day. That is a terrible environment. Run. I've been a part of systems that are like this. And I can tell you this for absolutely sure. If this is happening and it's not happening to you right now, it's going to happen to you. Get out of that environment because those investigations will never stop. Another big one in these kinds of environments is bullying and harassment. And it might not be what you think. There's the obvious bullying and harassment that's very easy to call out, and you should call it out. But there's also things that just simply make you feel bad and constantly end up happening. Emails that come to you that are both demanding and often caustic. And it doesn't have to be somebody that works in the organization that you work for. For instance, oftentimes people who are in the serving industry, who wait tables or, or whatnot, constantly being harassed for the way that they look or you know by patrons and so forth. If that is something that is making you feel absolutely horrible inside, Maybe it's time to go elsewhere to find what it is that you need in your life to feel productive and to get your needs met. Another big one is micromanagement. And this is something that happens really through managers that are exceedingly insecure and they don't trust the people around them. And so sometimes various employees need greater incentive to actually complete the work that they have because there might be a motivation issue. And that should be done with really compassion and kindness and structure. But if you have a management manager in your organization that is consistently micromanaging everybody and specifically doing it to you, it's also time to get out because that manager is insecure and that manager is going to throw you under the bus when something doesn't happen the way that's going to reflect well on that manager. And if you have been put on a performance improvement plan, 90% of the time they are documenting things to get rid of you. Just start looking for a job now and save yourself the time and the aggravation because it's coming. Oftentimes, performance improvement plans are made so that you can never actually reach the bar when a performance improvement plan really should be that. It should be your company teaming with you for you to become a better you. Does your company, does your industry have growth opportunities and are you able to be creative in the way that you wish to be creative at work? Look, not everybody wants to be creative. Some people really want a job that has a procedure and that you can easily understand and get it done at the end of the day and you feel in control and you leave the work at the office. That's fantastic if that is how you work. But in a toxic work environment, not only do you feel like Maybe there's some growth, but you're not seeing it for yourself.
When I started at a specific government agency called the Social Security Administration, I was sat down on my first week by a gray-haired general manager who sat and told me, son, in the next five years, you're going to see all of the baby boomers begin to retire. They're going to be moving on. The growth opportunity here is going to be absolutely astronomical. Five years later, I had the same entry-level job, and I was quitting because there wasn't any growth opportunity. The person who was promoted above me was somebody who lied on their application. And so it was really time to go. And all of those boomers, they were all still there. They were all still occupying the same job. If they tell you there's growth opportunities, it needs to be measurable. And if you are getting the sense that you've been working for a while and those things are not even close to materializing, then you've been lied to by a company and it's time for you to look into what your other options actually are. There are any measure of ways that companies are currently abusing employees. Oftentimes, they will give them a cell phone so that those employees can be available on Sunday afternoons and use that time when they're not compensating people for that time. You need to look at the ways in which this company is playing a role in your life and make a decision. Is this healthy? Is it healthy for my body? Is it healthy for my mind? Is it healthy for my long-term trajectory in my personal and professional life? Now, the mental health signs we obviously have, and this is something that Silicon Valley is known for and they don't want to talk about. All of the big companies consistently have people in their buildings who are having panic attacks every single week. They don't want the police called. They want to see if they can handle it in-house. They try to get you group counseling and so forth so that there's not a huge record of their people having constant anxiety-based symptoms. I know this because I know a lot of EMTs in the South Bay Area. In order for a company to be doing the right thing, they need to be getting you the kind of work environment that is sustainable. That means that you are not working 100-hour work weeks. It's literally killing you to do that. If you are dreaming about things at work and it's waking you up with cortisol flowing through your veins, you're not doing something that is in sync with your highest potential. If you have anxiety on Sunday afternoons going into Mondays, if you are letting go of your social circle in order to work, this is not the job for you. Are you sacrificing family time and friend time and connective time in order to get certain things done? Are you checking your emails on vacation? If you're doing these things, it's going to eventually catch up with you. These kinds of things are what lead to greater depression, isolation, uh, drug use, and anxiety. These sorts of things are the things that are going to shorten your lifespan, and they actually make you less creative and less productive. A lot of people tell me, well, I'm not a very religious person. I'm more spiritual. And then I press further. And what I hear is, well, I believe that there's something out there, but I'm not exactly sure what it is. If you're a spiritual person, which we all actually are, what are you doing about that? Are you doing some kind of mindfulness practice every single day? Do you have something that you incorporate into your work, into your exercise, so that you are actually able to bring your anxiety down. Another great thing for you is to seek out a mentor. It doesn't mean that you need therapy. And if you need therapy, you should get therapy. Therapy is an important thing to get if you've got you know a major issue in your life that you're trying to get over that has to do with your past. Do you have a mentor in your life that is helping you consistently evaluate where you are and where you want to go? You have somebody who's holding you accountable. Somebody who is helping you through your roadblocks, somebody who is helping you access the pieces of yourself that are worth the most. And if you don't, you really should consider getting one, like a high-level coach or a mentor, somebody that works for you 
Are you somebody who is dealing with midlife issues? And maybe this is a career path that early in your life provided you with a great deal of feeling important, feeling needed, feeling like you're caring about people. But what it's become is much more of a factory position where you just feel like you're losing yourself in your work all the time. That's just not good for you. And it's not good for the people around you. And it turns you into somebody who is jaded, which is the worst thing that you can become when you know you're jaded or when other people can see it and you can't. That means that your mental health has been affected and you are just going through the drudgery of a toxic work environment for you that is not allowing you to self-develop, to create, and to be the highest form of yourself. At the beginning of my professional career, and I mentioned this earlier, I started working for the Social Security Administration. I accepted a very low salary for a very secure job. And the promise was, keep working, kid. You're going to work yourself up in this agency and there's nothing but room to grow. The problem was that you trade security for who it is that you could become. And there was this notion, which is very common in very secure fields where, gosh, why would you leave this? It's so secure. Yeah, we're in a recession right now, but it doesn't affect us. I just bought a car this weekend. When you are in a perfectly secure environment, how is that limiting you from the self-development that you owe yourself, that you owe your family? When you're in a super secure thing, how is it inhibiting you as who you are in your highest form of you? And my career truly began the day that I walked out of the Social Security Administration for the last time. And I got into the real work of my life, which was being in the healing professions and really started challenging myself and developing myself. Through this period of time, I've dealt with fantastic companies. I've dealt with places that have complete narcissists as CEOs. I have dealt with terrible coworkers and really awesome people. When you stay in a place for too long and you become stagnant, you start becoming the things that are the worst characteristics of a toxic work environment. Because after all, those toxic work environments are made up of people who became that way. And oftentimes the work itself turns people into that, turns people into working into highly political environments within a company where there's a lot of guarding the gates and these sorts of things. Are you fulfilled? and how you spend the hours of your day. Can you change your consciousness in prayer and in mindfulness, in meditation, and know that you are truly living the greatest form of yourself? Are you challenged by somebody in your life that has nothing but the interest in who you are as the highest version of yourself? Are you continuing to develop you? No matter being 25 or 75, are you who you were born to be? Don't forget to like and subscribe to the Mindful Mutiny podcast in a lifetime where there are more decisions than anybody could possibly count. Living the highest form of yourself is the most rewarding thing that you can do. Make incredible, positive, risky, and bold decisions and be the highest version of you. Now go be something great.